welcome back to Rock Talk. I am Tristan Safford. I am your host and I am so excited about this week. We are just going to have a round table discussion of just as much basic information as we can throw out there for you. I do suggest you grab yourself a handy dandy little notebook so you could take some notes because we are going to be dishing the tea today. So the first co-host I want to introduce is Dave. Hi, Dave. Welcome aboard. Tell us a little bit about your background and what you do. Well, I do as little as I can get away with. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I do work in a mental hospital. Uh, I teach um, criminal, criminally insane students um, in a hospital, and uh, but I also am a special education teacher before that, and so... Um, as well as many other things. I got into rock tumbling a few years ago, and from there I got into lapidary. And so we actually now we raise funds to buy rock tumblers for kids who have autism on the side. That's really, really great. Um, how many ha uh, have you given away uh, to this point? The, the one that we just did uh, last week makes number 25. And, That's and, and we don't, That's awesome. we do not give away cheap rock tumblers. These are all lower tone rock tumblers that we get from Kingsley North Lapidary. Um, have to give them a little bit of a plug. They've been very great. Um, their sales reps are a member of our rock tumblers for autism Facebook group. And they have just treated us very well. And when I order something, they just look, see what they've got setting aside. If they don't have it listed and they just automatically set us up. That's awesome. Good folks over there. That's they are. For sure. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, the next guest I'm going to introduce today is Courtney. Courtney, come on and tell us a little bit about your background and what your business is. Um, hi. Uh, well, I, I cut and polish rocks um, for jewelry makers, so I make caps. Um, caps, and I sell slabs as well on occasion. Um, because, of course, I always have way too much material that I don't need, and I'm trying to be a little bit more organized. <laughs> but I have this disease that, uh, you know, makes me buy more and more rocks because they're beautiful. Um, <laughs> There's never enough rocks. Yeah, no. well, I have yeah, that, too. Yeah, that's what I You're safe say. here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I have, a, I have a Facebook business page. It's uh, CNS Services LLC dash Caps and Stones. And then I have my website, which is CapsandStones.com. Um, so you can find us at either one of those. Um, I admin in several different groups on Facebook. So I'm all over the place. And uh, I'm telling awesome. you, you have to go see Courtney's cabs, uh, especially the ones that she posted the last couple of days. Oh, my goodness. I'm just drooling. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Yeah, that's the Royal Imperial Jasper, the ones that you yes. commented on. Yeah, yes. yeah, they're really nice. Kind of a pinkish okay. orange that you had going on there. Yeah, they're uh -huh. beautiful. They're beautiful. Thank that you. is a beautiful stone. Uh, the next co-host I would like to introduce is Ryan. Ryan from Glacier Bros. Welcome aboard. Give us a little information. Hi, guys. My name is Ryan. And uh, I have a problem. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just like she was saying, I. Yeah, we all have a rock problem for sure. R Rockaholics but, Anonymous. Yes. Sir. <laughs> yeah. Well, but anyways, me and my little brother own a company called Glacier Bros. We buy direct from the mine, and we cut up different types of gemstone rough and sell slabs to jewelers all over the world through Facebook. So. But yeah, how's that? That's awesome. Doing? That's awesome. <laughs> Awkward silence. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm I'm a little diverted. I'm trying to keep up with what's going I, I on think in the we're background. All reading but... the comment. Yeah, we were all reading that comment. <laughs> yeah, I was too. I was too for sure. That's a good uh, one from Bill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are here to have a good time tonight, and um, I'm just wondering if you guys have any new projects happening, anything you got planned, like special big projects or anything like that. Hmm. I can't say there's spot. any special big projects, but I'm coming out of the slabbing phase um, as of tonight, trying to get back into. Matter of fact, I still have my gloves on. I was cabbing when it was time to log on. And so nice. I'm going to start uh, getting some, get back into some cabbing for a change. It's been a couple of months and uh, working on some Australian rainforest jasper that is very highly agatized and beautiful stuff. 
Nice. Oh, sounds nice. Are you going to show us? Yeah, did you finish one? Well, I haven't got a fit. I just started this one just just a few minutes ago. But uh, let's see if I can get it where it'll show. Oh, well that's enough. nice. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. I it love is this that, field. I love it. Oh, yeah. It is just, it, it's phenomenal material. I've had it for probably a year. And just one of those things that you start looking around and thinking, okay. Um, and believe it or not, you can get bored of some rocks, right? I mean, you just do it all the time. So if you're doing... You, you want to do something different. It's not that you're bored with the rocks, but you want to do something different. So I was looking around, and there's the rainforest jasper. And I thought, okay, I haven't done any of that in a long time. So I picked it up and cut a shield and got it shaped, uh, preformed, and now I'm going to cabin. I was just uh, going to ask you if you said that out loud about. I, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it's like anything else. I mean, you know, you, you get to look at it and think, well, I've cabbed that and I've cabbed that and I've cabbed that and it's beautiful material, but I want to do something different. And that's one of the reasons why we buy so much new material is that's we're right. looking for that next best great thing. <laughs> I need more purple stuff in my life. <laughs> oh, I love yeah. purple stuff. It's my favorite. Mine too. Somebody sold me some Charles White that I've got to uh, finish hey. slabbing up where I can use it. I don't know if she remembers selling me that or not. Oh, I sure do. I have my slab <laughs> hanging out. That was a beautiful in slab, wasn't it? It, yeah. it was totally beautiful. You picked a great one to send me back. Yeah. So what I'm doing right now, I, I know I look totally distracted because I kind of am. And it's just I am writing down names and numbers of everybody that is commenting tonight i do have um a really cool gift that i'm going to give to you and i'm just going to show you really quick it is a few awesome stickers to stick on your cool uh, rock equipment a piece of acid i don't know i can't get the color to show up everything looks bright white is it calcite yeah, it's yellow calcite from Mexico. Yeah. Love it. Um, Fun UV. Fun UV. This is something that I really love. It is a mushroom mushroom necklace. Oh, yeah. But the, the base has a quartz point sticking out. So that's going to the person who wins tonight if uh awesome you guys stick around make comments stick around make comments and we are good to go there you go make sure you guys like the video too like yeah, subscribe and like, share subscribe if you can share. That's, right. <laughs> that's right it really helps Tell us out. all your friends um well i'm working on several custom orders um i finished one today for two peter site cabs <laughs> um that a lady wanted for pumpkins and then i'm doing a pendant oh, that... and earring set out of that green imperial jasper uh that i've been slabbing lately and then we're getting some pictures here do you have them with you so that we can see we know you guys know we love show and tell <laughs> they're so slippery what'd you use for the pumpkin oh wow peter site uh -huh. nice. that is so, such a fun like, stone ooh. it's a gold so this one's gold and red i don't know the color sucks Did you cover your i can face? say i've never seen a golden red one so that's really cool to me. you've never seen gold and red peter's light oh it's no. so beautiful gold red blue yeah i've even seen some this green is like the gold and the blue tones. Um, is that uh some of the same stuff that you sent me courtney no no this Dif is actually slab. stuff that i bought from ryan quite some oh, time ago the oh, okay. oh the old stock the dashed Indian, away that. yep oh, stashed okay. away um the, what i have is just straight up blue and gold it doesn't have any of the the reds and stuff yeah it. finding uh, that red and yellow from africa nowadays is getting ridiculously yeah. hard and it's, it's amazing really amazing material um but then i had my my second cousin um where is she utah i think she's by you somewhere Kirsten. oh um she hit me up today and asked me if i could make her a heart so i got out that starry night that real red with the pyrite and the black that i was showing you guys and i showed her that so she, i'm going to make her a heart with that so i've got a few customs going on as well as my normal cabin 
That's all I'm working on. Okay. Nice. Not staying alive, you know. So, Courtney, a question about your, your custom work. You know, we all start out, we don't know a lot about what we're doing. Right. And uh, then you start making some cabs, and people start saying, oh, man, that's really a nice cab. And, and you look at it, of course, I always see the flaws in my cabs that nobody else seems to see. Yes. But where do you come to the point that you have the confidence that what you're doing is good enough to do custom work for other people or to sell other people? I actually started doing custom work pretty early on. I had this lady that just, I didn't have the confidence in me, but she did. And she just kept saying, can you make me this? Can you make me that? And I'd be like, I'm not sure. Let's find out. And I would make it and she'd be happy with it. And, uh, I mean, I don't know how many custom pieces I did for her a lot, a lot. And then I just, you know, then other people throughout the years, you know, someone would just send me a message and say, Hey, do you have any of this material? Can you cut me, you know, whatever. Um, I've got one lady in particular that loves serapinite and she's the one I did the Peter sites for. So I keep some serapinite stashed away just for her because I know eventually she's going to hit me up and say, Hey, can you make me whatever? Um, so it's just kind of rolls like that. And then I've got on my website, you know, a custom order form where tell me what, you know, what stone you're looking for, what size you're looking for, what shape are you looking for? And I'll let you know if I can cut it for you. Oh, nice. So it, and, you, it, and you do a lot of that, that, that really small, a little finer <laughs> stuff as well. No. Courtney's down, down big, the, big not. freehand. Oh, do you like, you're like I, me. Like me. I thought you did some of that five, six, seven millimeter stuff. I That's will not, not cut right anything less than 10 unless you are a very special person in my life. Because my hands just can't. My hands are too big and I'm starting right. to get arthritis. So it's just too hard to make the real small ones. Yeah. So uh, something I seen today, because my husband has arthritis in his hands pretty bad and he does a lot of manual labor. Um, Amazon sells compression gloves that don't go over your fingertips. Um, mm -hmm. And you could probably wear those under nitrile gloves. It might help you just that have a little help. bit extra dexterity. Right. And they're pretty right. cheap from what I what I seen. And that's not a bad idea, really. I might try that because I have <laughs> both arthritis and carpal tunnel in both hands. So cabbing some days um, can be a little more difficult. Right. Right. You use warm water, right? I, yeah, well, I'm not tonight because I was too lazy to go back in and refill. But normally, yeah, I go in the house, uh, get me a two-gallon container of hot water, not just warm. Yes. I'll run it out hot. So as it sits and it comes across the wheel, um, right. then it, you know, it cools just enough that I can keep my hands under it. And it does help. Yeah, absolutely. I do yeah, the same thing. I don't thing. have arthritis, but when I'm working stone up here in the winter in the Arctic tundra, my yes. hands will lock up. Because it gets so cold, all, all the tendons in my hand will lock up. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you all saw what Little Dab just said. Uh, they have a pair of those gloves and uh, said it really does help. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, I might have to look nice. into that then. I still won't cut the small stones, though. <laughs> <laughs> She's Sorry. a little chicken. I can't help you with that. It's not. I just don't like them. I don't. I don't think that she. I don't enjoy cutting. How exactly precise that she is on small ones. I think whenever you have a bigger cab, if all the lines are really nice and clean from every direction, yes, you can really tell someone's quality. Yeah. Yeah, Courtney is quality. I will tell you that much. This week, I received a package from her. I did order a uh, really cool shaped cab. Um, okay, so you can see the shape. It's very small, and it is coral it's coral oh, wow. yeah but what's interesting about this is she found a piece of coral a slab that has the really teeny teeny tiny so uh the details really show up and pop in a small cab like this right. uh whereas if she had used you know bigger pieces or a bigger design then it wouldn't have shown up quite so well i think you have a very good eye is what i'm trying to say <laughs> Reading thank, her you. Art, she definitely does. thank you well and how about doing precision cabs courtney uh, i'm getting ready to attempt that for the first time i don't know if you all can see that yeah. someone has asked me to make them a fidget spinner it's very awesome. cool and each side very of this cool. is going to need to have uh so it's going to be a double-sided stone i mean it has to come out on either side right and so having right. to use a set of calipers 
and be very precise. That's going to be brand new for me. I've not yeah. tried anything like that. I almost yet. wonder if you, you are cut stretching. Out the outside, I love it. You know, like with a drill press, you know how you would cut out a ring. I want yeah. to right. cut out the outside and the inside of a bearing. And use a Dremel and be able to put steel balls in it and actually make a stone bearing. I wonder if you could do that. Ryan, huh. get on it. Probably. Why get don't on you it. give it a shot and let us know? <laughs> I would try. I would try. That sounds See, fun. now somebody yeah. out there is fixing to take your idea and run with it. And they're going to be a millionaire before we get it tried. <laughs> no, because the stone is going to crack before the metal would still. You know what I mean? But just the concept of having a stone right. bearing. Right. That's really Right, cool. right, right. That's cool. It's but probably yeah, how the ancient people did things. Probably. But Maybe. that's going to be really interesting. <laughs> You'll have to let me know how that goes. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm really excited to, you know, the, the thing is the three stones are exactly the same size as the bearing case. And you, and you just buy the bearings and press them in and, and glue them in. We printed, I actually printed the fidget spinner component on my 3D printer. Oh, nice. nice. And so starting to integrate printing 3D components into the lapidary, just just something else um, to try and see how it turns out. Yeah. Have you ever cut, well, you have because you do the belt buckles, right? When you cut to the setting? Yes. Right, so when you do that, um, do you use dental floss by chance? No, what would you use the dental floss for? So <laughs> So I learned this from one of my silversmith friends, actually. Anytime she sends me a setting to cut a stone for her for, she sends me a piece of dental floss with it. So the first time she did it, I called her and I was like, what is the, what are you trying to tell me? Why are you sending me dental floss? You oh can God. use the dental floss. You lay it inside the setting, put the stone in. It makes it easier to pop the stone back out, so you you know you've got that nice tight fit. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Pops the stone. Makes sense. So, I never heard that before. Yeah. But makes, no, but that makes it sense. Works right? really yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's tip, a really good trip. Tip, tip number one for the night. <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. I mean, and, and that's what tonight's show is really about: is yeah. those tips and tricks and the beginning things to know. Um, that's awesome. But I thought that might work nicely with that, you know, because you're gonna have. I mean, you've got to be real precise with those those stones. So right, right, and it's going to be so. What has to happen is the stones actually is going to be two split stones that are going to be glued together to get okay. the right because you know got to cab those separately to have a different color on either side. Gotcha. So really, this will actually have six stones six in it stones. when it's complete. Nice, nice, yeah. nice, nice. Oh, I look forward to seeing that. Are you going to make new one too? I want one. You want one too? <laughs> I were, do. You know, that would if be you're great. making them. Yeah, it'd be if it great works if everybody out good. wanted one. Yeah, yeah, if they turn um, out nice, I think we all should get one. I'll even send you some slabs to cut them with. That's See, now perfect. I'm getting scared. <laughs> well, and, and you asked about, I'll show you something here that I did. A new product line. I could you, be. Patent it. You, that sounds like a great product line. Absolutely. Patent it. Nobody's quick. doing it. Never heard I'll of tell it, you so what I did. Yeah, ahead of the curve. This is where a three D printer really comes in handy. You probably can't. Can you see the number on 32, that? Thirty two. Yes. Thirty two. And then I have, of course, you know, here's your thirty for your thirty by forty cab. There you go. But when I started the belt buckles, if you start with the size of your cab, when you get that that finished and you've small. done, it's too small. Yep. So yeah, I kept working on it. And finally, I thought, wait a minute. So I went into my, I have a 16-year-old son who works with 3D printers as well. And I said, hey, I need a 30 by 40 oval. I need a 31 by 41 and a 32 by 42. And so what I finally figured out was the, the 32 by 42 was perfect. So I used this to create my stone. And, and then I, I get that 15 degree bevel on there. Yep. And when you've done that and you come back, you can set that in the back of those belt buckles because the way they're commercially made, they're not exactly perfect. Right. And then you just come back and you trim off yep. the edge of that bevel a little bit until that slides down in there where you want it. And it took exactly. me, I don't know, it took me 10 stones to figure that out. Wow. That's a lot of work to, to figure out something on your own that way. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's, really great that's... tip. Find somebody that knows how to do that instead of <laughs> learning it yourself. Well, yeah, that's really important. Showed me how to make plugs whenever we started. 
I had to figure I that all out by yeah. myself. Right. Well, no, I know how to make them now. I probably made them. <laughs> but that well, is that really I think important it's... to know when you're trying to do a calibrated stone like that, that you've right. got to give yourself a millimeter and a half, two millimeters. Because right. It's going gonna, it's gonna to shrink. Yeah. If you start with what it's the end point is supposed to be, it's not going to, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Right. And I think that's the definition of success. All those times you tried, you kept going. It that's knocked right, you right. down. You yeah. got up and you kept going until you oh, got yeah. it done. And that's great. I love that. Yeah. I mean, how do we learn? By making mistakes, right? Yeah. I mean, like nobody ever told me that the wheels would eat your fingernails off, right? When I started either. I learned that one the hard way. Real, real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you a... And they a, take forever to grow back. Let me tell you a story about that right quick. When I first started, I didn't know to use a dop stick. So I'm in here on the wheel, and I've got this little cab made, a single wheel, and I'm doing all of this number, and I'm doing this. Next thing I know, the tops of my fingers, the nails are eat all the way, I mean, all the way through, right? I've got holes in the top, and I mean, it's just a very thin layer under there. I thought, okay, I know what I'll do. I will get me some of that, that fingernail stuff. It's called hard as nails. Yeah. And I would brush yeah. over the top. You know, and so I would do that and it would kind of keep those filled in and wouldn't do. So um, I did something really stupid. Um, I woke up in the middle of the night and my eyes were very dry and I reached for my bottle of sustain. Oh, and then my no. wife wondered why I was screaming for help on the way to the restroom. And I'm trying to scoop. I, I grabbed that bottle and I put that dumb bottle of hard as nails there on my nightstand as well. And I dumped that in my eye. Oh, and. Geez. Fortunately, it is now water soluble instead of the old style stuff. Thank you. So I flushed my eye with water, um, but I'm telling you, it hurt. And now we laugh about that, but I'm thinking, yeah, no, a dop stick is a really good thing to learn to use. Yes. I, yes. I still don't use them. I still don't really, use them. Ryan? I don't either. Yeah, because whenever I, I was do. making plugs, I had to get used to holding. Yeah, and, and spinning, I, I right, did, right, dropping. I I did everything by hand, so I got so used to that. Now I I can only cab by hand. I don't like using the top right, stick right. anymore. I didn't like them at first either. It took me a while to get yeah. used to them. But right. now, even if I'm doing something like you're talking about, I'll still put it on a dop stick and just hold the stone. Yeah, I do the same one thing. One hand right. and the dop right. with the other. So, so like, hold uh, the stick here and, and hold my fingers here, and, uh, and I do one of these numbers with it. Yeah, yeah. Say, yeah. I did that today, actually. I was working on a stone that had a, a big druzy pocket in the middle of it. So I couldn't put the dot in the center of the back of the stone. I had right. to put it off to the side, so I had to be real careful with that. Courtney, how do you polish? Okay, because I have – hold on a second. I have this. And this is just a small example of what a Dugway stone looks like. You see how it has that open bug? Yeah. My biggest problem is when I go to put this on the flat lap and I go to polish it, sometimes these tiny little crystals come out and then they get on to the flat lap right. and then scratch the stone to all heck. So what's your solution to that if you're going around bugs with crystals in it? Well, I don't use a anyone can lap. answer. <laughs> I just am super, I got, super careful. Yeah, what is your solution? Because I'm just so like I said, whenever, I don't use a flat lap, so I don't. Whenever know. we were doing stuff that had a chance of having loose crystals in it, so that way you weren't scratching the face of your product, like almost towards the end, mm -hmm. um, we would get say if it was ocean jasper, and you would still get little crystals inside of the pockets. We would take the ocean jasper pieces that we were going to cab. We would cut our preforms out, and then we would leave them and iron out overnight. And then in the morning, whenever you come back, any kind of loose crystal that was left on there, the iron out would have separated. So then you just rinse it in water and you cab it. It, it affects nothing except for those loose bug crystals. Just a quick note. Um, if you do are using iron out, uh, it will take out anything that has iron in it it's uh you know yep. so it'll change it could change the color of your stone i mean i do that when i'm cleaning quartz stone, but, right yeah. okay for, i just well, wanted uh, that clear for anybody else bug, like what you just showed it wouldn't affect that stone at all except no let's take the crystals right. off right there's another yeah. solution too cheerston and and you have you have a regular flat lap right yeah yeah um 
mine, what I really love is mine is a flat lap, but I can turn it and slant it. And yeah. so I have my water coming in at the top. I cab at the bottom. So as everything comes around and has enough water flushing in it, will throw those bits and pieces off to the side. So you might try, actually, you could make you a couple of uh, pieces of two before, cut those at an angle and slant that up so that you're running on a slant and do the same thing. Right. So the water is rinsing those crystals right. down. Right. That's a really good idea. In fact, I'm going to do that. So thank you for that idea. Yeah, yeah cut you a couple right. of pieces of two by six at, at like a, uh, oh, probably a 40 degree angle. Uh, maybe a little bit less depending on how much you want that and then and get it where you can set it that way and secure it and see if that doesn't help. Yeah, that makes sense. Speed, I understand. Courtney always sends me pictures. She's like, this is my goal for today. And there's 50 cabs. <laughs> Moved to six, and I'm like, get it, just get it. <laughs> <laughs> I just said in one of those the other day, this is my goal for this week. I've accomplished five of them so far, Ryan. So I don't think I'm going to make my goal, but I'm going to give it a shot. Okay, so I'm going to start checking in with Ryan, I guess, and I'll let you know, like, what my goals are and if I meet them. So thank you for volunteering to do that for us. Yeah. <laughs> There you, go. there you go. So, so speaking about, go ahead, David. Sorry. No, go ahead. I was just going to ask you since the, the since tonight's show is about um, learning some of the basics. Um, Chirsten, where, where do you look at to to start with that? And I think that's where you were going to go as well. It was, yeah. So I think since Courtney was talking about DOPS, I think we should talk about that a little bit, um, just so that everybody here has a really good basic general understanding of how it works okay so what i do um a lot of people use nails a lot of people will buy actual dop sticks i go to home depot and i spend 73 cents or 29 cents or whatever it is and get one of those 10 foot dowels eight foot dowels six foot dowel whatever whatever size i want it and i just cut it down so for 73 cents i get 10 dop sticks right um, Perfect. And you just make it the length that you're comfortable with. I get some of the little teeny ones. I get some medium ones. I get some larger ones because I do make different size stones. So I use different size stop sticks. Um, Are you saying length or width? Girth. 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 So I make mine generally about four inches long, three to four inches long. I used to make them longer, um, but as I got more comfortable with using them. I like them a little bit shorter now. Um, and then for, it's real important to, so my dock station, and it's way over there, or I would show it to you, um, has a ledge on it because it's real important to warm your stones up before you try and put any wax or dock sticks on them. Why? Um, it helps so your your wax is melted hot wax doesn't really adhere to a cold stone well right it adheres okay. to a warm stone much better so in my on amazon i got these handy dandy little nail polish bottles six pack for maybe five bucks in them i have a mixture of 50 percent denatured alcohol and 50 percent shellac my shellac yep. is colored because that's all Home Depot had when I went to get it. They didn't have clear. Um, so I'll take that and I'll dab that on the back of my stone, put that on my dot station, let it sit for about five minutes. Gets that stone nice and hot. The reason for the shellac and the denatured alcohol is also to help the wax adhere to the stone. So wax naturally has a little bit of shellac in it. It sticks to itself. Don't look like that, mister. Um, <laughs> oh no, the comment, I read that comment, I'm sorry. Um, eight inches long, nice. Um, I'm going to be quiet. Um, <laughs> so the wax adheres to that the shellac denatured alcohol mixture. What I found originally before I knew this trick about the denatured alcohol and shellac is that I would put my stones on my dop stick and I'd put them under the water and I'd start cutting them and they would pop off and they'd pop off. Especially and they'd pop cold off, water. Pop off and they'd right. pop off and it would just right. 
And then I was like, well, screw the dop stick. If this is what happens. Well, then I took a little lapidary class and the teacher taught me this trick. And I've never had the, I mean, I still have one that'll pop off every now and then. But that before. has really made a huge difference. So you just dab it on, and you don't need a lot. You just dab it on the back, throw it on your dop station, let it warm up, get your little dop of wax, just throw it on the back, and you're good to go. Now, do you also occasionally add a little of the shellac into your dop as I, it is aged? Into the wax, yes. If it gets right. too thick, if it's a consistency that I don't like, but the wax is still good, yeah. Throw a little bit of shellac yeah. in the wax itself, mix it back up, and you can use that wax again over and over and over again. It, it is the shellac that causes the wax to stick to the stone to begin with. So yeah. over time, as you've heated it, um, over and over, that shellac begins to deteriorate, and so your dot no longer sticks very well to the stones. Right, right. Yeah. And the wax gets thick and pasty, and yeah. Right, like right. We're going to keep it and a nice, nice consistency. Don't put too much, though, or it'll be runny and Where do you guys in. normally right. get your wax from? What's your main place to get wax from? I get mine off of Amazon. Amazon? Yeah, and I just search red jeweler's wax because I prefer the red wax. Oh, the red, like, okay. I don't like the green. The green to me is, I don't know. I just don't like All I've ever I, used I is the green red. from Kingsley North, and it always worked out good for me. Okay. Though, so. so is there only the two colors of wax no. then? Oh, gosh. Oh, there's, all, there's black there's also. Colors, there's a yellow. There's black. Yeah. There's purple. There's yellow. There's all kinds of different colors. What does each color, like, does it correspond like this wax is good for this type of stone or does it just not matter? I think it's a personal preference thing. So the red is actually called jeweler's wax and it's usually yes. what jewelers yeah. use. Most okay. lapidary people will use either the black or the green. Um, I don't know what the difference is between the black and the green. So usually the red is mostly what uh, people who do faceting Mm -hmm. Use uh, a smaller amount will hold the stone on and uh, does not uh, spread out as much. And, and the reason I know that is, is my dad. Matter of fact, he's sending me his uh, faceting machine. Um, uh, and that's what he used was the red for that very reason. And then, you know, of course, the difference between the black and the green is one has a has a greater bond than the other or whatever. Uh, I use the green is, is what I've been using. I may try the black there you go. or the red. Yeah, I've always, just from the get-go, I just didn't like the green, something about it. Um, it came <laughs> with it came with my cab machine. Um, I tried I it, green. didn't like it, and uh, just for whatever well, reason, just ordered the red. It was when I looked it up on Amazon, you know, Dop Wax or whatever, right. red and green came up, so I ordered yeah. some of the red, and I've liked it ever since. So I can tell you that the green is very peevish about water temperature while you're cabbing. If your water is just a little bit too cool, it'll pop that cab off of that stone. Right. That's happened to me right. so many right. times. Yeah. I love Josh Jr. comment about that aquarium heater in a five gallon bucket with a small water pump. Right. You've done that. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Done Absolutely. That Keep that water warm. That's awesome. I've got the pump in the five-gallon bucket, but I never thought about a heater. Kristen? Kirsten? Yeah. Um, no, I was just thinking because I have my water for my uh, flat lap is in one of those pump things. So you have to pump it, and then it circulates the water up through the hose and then drips onto the flat lap. Everything is DIY with me. So um, I was just wondering if I could get like a heater like you know a prison heater or whatever the column pump. that could go in there that would but it's got a seal though you know what yeah I mean? yeah i don't know how you would get that because you'd have to have the cord coming out oh a prison heater i see what you're saying <laughs> yeah um, sorry i dated a car that's a good Fell question in. that's a good question i don't know I, yeah, I don't think there's a solution for me. So what I do is I get a hot uh, electric kettle full of water and I just dump it in the already cold right. water out there because I work outside basically. Um, it's okay. in my garage, but it it's not, you know, finished. It's almost right. finished, but it's not quite What you finished. need is a five-gallon bucket and a pump and a heater. Yep. Just say it. But then how would I get the pressure of the water to go up and over my hose into my flat lap? That's what that's I'm what saying. That's what the pump is for, baby. Yeah, yeah that's what the pump that's does. That's what the pump is for. So, right. so 
the so pump so it, it's like a it's like a pond pump, right? It's a pond pump is basically exactly. what they are. Yep. So it's a submersible pump, pump is what it's called. It's a submersible mm -hmm. pond pump, right. and there's a certain amount of pressure. You would just run the pump. I love that you guys are teaching me so much. <laughs> I have an extra one. You want me to send it to you? No. No, I'll try to find one around here. I'm sure it should it should be easy to find. They're I think not, that's yeah. Just go to. I mean, you could go to um, really a pet store. The okay. aquarium so section at a pet any, store. Any yep. kind of aquarium. Yeah. I'm there every sure, day. Just make sure it gets enough. Make sure it's a pond pump and not an aquarium pump. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Aquarium pumps aren't going to have enough pressure. It just pumps air. Oh. Right. Where a pond pump okay. will. Well, I got to take notes now, so <laughs> thank you. Uh, one of the things yeah, that... The aquarium heater will work to keep it heated, but the, you, you need the pond pump to have enough Wait, pressure. so I have to buy two things. Okay. Well, if you want to keep your water heated, yeah. If you if you want it warm, yeah. You need the second thing. Yes. You got to buy three because you got to buy a five-gallon bucket or find one. Somewhere. I got 20 of them. There you go. I'm good on buckets. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Josh put a Jr. pond said, pump. Josh Jr. said he'll make a video and put it on TikTok for you. Okay. There you go. You do that. And he said he does it for his flat lap. Same thing. Okay. Aquarium heaters, 15 bucks on Amazon, he said. Well, and actually, Thank down you. underneath down here, I have a... Yep. Mine is a really big submersible, and mm -hmm. it is uh, like this 40-gallon, these, these plastic totes that you can get at Walmart. Right. And that sits in the bottom of that. You can put about 40 gallons of water in there and wow. just pump because mine, mine pumps out of a, uh, a uh, little hose, right? No, mine's the bigger one. I have the, oh, really? the yeah, because it's really old unit. Okay. And so I can put that uh, just under a half inch. It's like three eighths right. uh, hose on there and really get a high volume of water. And that's one of the, one of the things to keep in that flat lap clean. Nice. Nice. So, Josh Jr., I have a question for you. Why do you need a lid? I mean, I have a lid, but my lid is literally the top of a cardboard box because I've got the hoses coming out, right? So I don't have a real lid. Is that just to keep debris from coming in? Jaws. Hey, Jaws. So while we're waiting, he might have popped out for a second. Uh, yeah, yeah. Or waiting on Jaws to type in. But I tell you, he's he's probably typing right now, and he's actually somebody local to me right here in the town where I live. And, uh, and keep the yeah, he is that he, okay. he's that guy that is so good with the obsidian. I mean, he's right. just just fabulous. Mm -hmm. And that's a good point about keeping the debris out because I do right. find before I put cardboard box top on the top of my five gallon I would get debris in there and then it would get sucked up into the pump and then I wouldn't have my water flow would be off and then I'd have to like clean everything out and find where the jam is and it, it was a pain in the butt so that does make sense well and something else to allude to so this this little shop that I'm in right here I have a heater running over in the in the corner that I bought at Costco but this was the potting shed when we bought this house a few years ago and I swiped it to do from my wife um, to do this in. Um, and so, you know, I have a bucket of water sitting out here. Um, I came out one day to do some cabbing. I looked down the bucket of the water and it, it, a mouse had gotten in it overnight yes. and, and drowned in there, you know, and so you got to change all of your water out and everything. So a lid on that, really great idea. Yeah. I found a mouse in one of my buckets the other day. It was one of my saw buckets, not my cabbing bucket, but yeah, same issue. And then I found a snake in the other one the other day. Shut up. A they are not water soluble. No, no. The snake <laughs> I love was snakes as pets, snake, not wild snakes. The snake snakes. was alive, but the, the mouse was not. And the mouse stunk really, really bad. Did you, right. uh, did you yeah. save that snake? I did. Of course Thank I did. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I, awesome. I put him outside. We appreciate that. Oh, I thought you said save as in like, like put it in a jar. Oh. No, no, like, like, go, go <laughs> thank you. Good job, home. Courtney. Yeah. No, he, was a, he was just a little baby guy, and he was actually oh. in my soapy water bucket, so I was a little concerned about it. But yeah, I got him out and took him out front. So, like I wanted to show you here. I have. I have this little thing here that I got from Highland Park Lapidary. What was that? See, it has a hole in the end of it right here, and uh, and and then I 
I have these boxes of screws. These are just just a wood screw. They're about oh, an inch an inch and a half long, maybe somewhat something like that. And I can take that and put it in there. And there's a little Allen wrench that you tighten that down with. So I have gone because I had so many problems back at one time with with the DOP station and the DOP wax. I thought, okay, I'll try this. So I started using these. And I simply put a drop of super glue on the back of my cab, and I set that on there, and I leave it set. Now, one of the w one of the drawbacks of this is it takes that a little longer to set up, or you can use it than what it does dot wax. Okay. And uh, but some of the stones that I do are really big stones because I make pop sockets. So and when you say a little longer, what does a little longer mean? Um, I, I let these set a minimum of an hour, and sometimes even then it, it won't set long enough because that's kind of sealed up inside those threads. Um, so if I really want a good bond because I'm doing a bigger stone, I'll leave them set overnight. Right. right. Keep them where it's warm. Yeah, you can do it. You know, yeah. That even with wax, yeah. The nice thing about this kit right here is because, you know, the way that works, you can you put that in and you screw it on, so you're always changing. So I can go over here. You can see my bench. I've got 20 of them over there with the, with the screws already glued onto them. Yep. But then if, if I need a little more clearance because I'm working on the wheel, I can just slide that off. Oh, nice. And I have a smaller yeah. diameter, and I have a little more clearance around the wheel versus. But this is really nice with the arthritis. It, it's cool. a rubber. Yeah. And so, you know, this. I think the kit was like 30 bucks at Highland Park Lapidary. On their website. Whenever, did you have to get used to not flat spotting whenever you started using that? Because it's so big, you have to rotate it more. Uh, a little bit, yeah, yeah, and that's where that—that's really nice that that handle coming off that way. Yeah, and, that, and allowing that you to work. Bad, the big piece. Yeah, I would think that that would flat spot a lot. You know what I mean by flat spotting? Yeah. Right, especially trying to do your girdle. Yeah. The, the sure. girdle was especially so. I can slap that off of there, and I can get closer to my wheel now. And keep that where I needed to be for my girdle while I while I polish that girdle, and so with this on there, it is a little less clearance, and so yeah, that that. But otherwise, um, it didn't take me long to adjust at all. I went from using dowels to using this, and because I didn't understand at the time about the cold water and the dop wax and all of that, I was just frustrated. And so, but now I'm going back to using both. If I want to do something that's a little faster, you can throw some dop on there. I've got the the. The, the dop uh, pot that I bought from Johnson Brothers Lapidaries where I buy my wax and stuff from. And uh, little giant pump pumps actually create warmth. They're magnetic motors. Submersible might not need a heater at all. I have to keep that in mind. Giant pond pumps. Nice. Yeah, write that down, Cheers, and don't forget it. I'm going to write that I, down. I know. Did you write that? No, that, that's a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. Little, little giant pom pumps, if, if it can create heat for you and you don't have to buy a heater too, might as well right, save the money. Right. Absolutely. I just got freaked out just now because I heard a noise in the house I haven't heard for a long time and the heater just kicked on. Yay. Oh, it's getting cold outside. <laughs> so I am looking at the current Kingsley North catalog, and it says that a pound of dop wax is about 20 bucks. If you yeah. buy in bulk, yeah. you know, you get the discount. Right. How long will one pound of, because to me that seems like long a time. very lot. A, year. a really long time. Really yeah. Long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's not something you have to buy often. No. Right, like Zam. You just yeah. buy it randomly. I think I have bought Dop Wax in six years twice. Right. And okay. Probably if you're using nothing but Zam on like a, a, a mop type brush head, it'll last forever. Right. You can make a, you can make a stick right. of Zam last forever. Use it on a I've had the brush. same stick for seven years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah and I use it on well, everything I polish. Buck, right? <laughs> Well, it's kind of like using cerium oxide. It's the same way. I, I think I think in three years, four years, I've used a whole tablespoon of cerium oxide um, yeah. because it just lasts for so long. You make a little paste out of it, brush a little on the wheel, and uh, you put some more water in it. Spray some a little happening. water on it. Yeah, and, and it just lasts for a really long time. And I bought, I think I bought a quarter pound of it 
And you can't even tell where I've taken it out of the bottle in the four years I've had it. So I think that's a really good point with a lot of these things that we as lap dairy um, need to use, you know, you're going to, it's a one time buy, maybe twice. Right. Right. Um, and so it will be worth it in the long run. Absolutely. I just use nails and super glue. I'm old school. Well, and nails will work fingers. exactly for what I'm doing as well. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's new school. You go through saw Is blades it? more than Ooh. anything. <laughs> saw blades. Saw whatever blades, works. yeah. Whatever works for you. Two saw for blades is the thing that months. everybody goes through. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, and speaking of that, I finally did get, I know I talked last time that, that I had had to order a new blade for my 10 inch and it finally came in. Um, I wasn't able because uh, nobody had the thickness of a blade. I, I, I'm tired of when you get into something because of the the uh, the speed that it runs through the blade. If you have the thinner blades on the 10 inch, you'll get some deflection and, and sometimes a little curve out of that stone. And so I wanted something a little bit thicker because I cut a lot of really, really hard materials. Yes. And so I went to Covington and ordered this one and I'm anxious to get it on my saw. So finally got that in. Um, it's, I'm, I'm waiting to see, I mean, it's, uh, it looks like a nice blade. And so first we'll see. Yeah, you'll have you to and me are opposites in something for the first time ever, Dave. We agree on everything. Uh, <laughs> with saw blades, no. So listen, we bought our Highland Park 20 inch and it got the agate eater. I mean, it has to almost be a quarter inch thick. You know what I mean? So every time right. that you cut a slab, you're losing a slab almost. Right. So we right. buy Highland Park, and they are a sixteenth of an inch thick. And Talking we save right. so much on material. Yeah, we don't use the green right. one anymore. Yeah. No. That's no. an amazing blade. It was amazing. But we use Kingsley North, their brand of actual saw blades, and they're fantastic. Right. And they're okay. so inexpensive. Why? Go price. Go price yeah. that. Yeah. Give us an idea yeah. of the price difference. Okay, so the because I'm getting a new tenant saw. Cost me two hundred dollars ish. I pay thirty for my Kingsley North ones. Wow. wow. Yeah. And you like them better? Do they what? Last, do they last as long? Or so you? of course it's not. It's you're talking six to eight months on a Highland Park one, cutting all right. day, every day. They right. have replaceable notches that you can rehammer in. Right. And everything like that. Um, I don't know. I would rather go through two Kingsley North ones in a month and save all of that product. So much product that I save on blade thickness comparison. You never see deflection marks on any of our slabs or anything that we cut where there's like weird wave grooves. Right. Right. They, they make a really good blade. And as long as you know how to align your blade on your saw, whatever saw that you have, as long as you know how to align your blade, they're fantastic. Okay. They really are for the amount of money that you pay for them. Right. Right. Well, and the, and, and the problem with, with the thinner blades is most saws have a feed that is set to a regulated speed. And sometimes you'll go to cut a material that is harder and maybe you need to be able to slow that feed down to keep from getting that blade deflection. Yeah. And that's where I love my old 14-inch saw. It, it uses water pressure as a feed and i have a dial and i can dial that right down to two or three pounds of pressure if i wanted to sit all day take all day to cut one slab that is a smoothest cutting saw that i have ever seen my 10 inch highland park that i just set up um uh, with that little i mean because it came with a very very thin blade and the feed is just a little too fast for how thin that blade is and i would get actual deflection that when I started, I, I, I would be up against the blade on one end, but when it finished the other, I would be, you know, a sixteenth of an inch away from the blade when it finished because it would deflect that much because oh, the oh, speed wow. is too fast for the for the for the how thin that blade is. No, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. no, I would I would be pretty upset. I've never had uh, the Highland Park do anything like that yeah. to me ever. Right. But you know, right. they they have that that three pulley system to where you pull the bottom pulley up. And you can change the speed on the saw whenever, whenever. Right now that, yeah. Yeah, the, the 14 and on up, you can do that. Mine, the, the one I had that problem with is the 10 inch. So it has a set oh. feed on it. It's the electric oh, no. feed. 
Yeah, been, and so, been, you know, and, and that happens. And you might even, it can even be a thing of maybe um, one time the feed on one when they assemble it, it is set right, but maybe the next one, the electronics aren't regulating as well. And so your feed will be a little faster, give you too much pressure. If I'm cutting softer stone, stone not a problem. But if I cut that, that really hard, like turkey agate, wow, I get a lot of deflection out of it. So I'm going to this, this thicker blade and see what that does for me. Um, and uh, I hope, you know, not real expensive material. And, and it's a thin enough blade, I won't lose a lot, but a little bit more than what I like. Yeah. So something else to consider, you know, if you're looking at the basics, consider the stone you're cutting, how expensive it is, how much you're going to lose to the width of the blade. Right. Yeah, and I mean, if you guys are cutting agates or really hard, high varnish jaspers or obsidians or glass, you might want to go with a thicker blade if you're cutting that kind of stuff right. all day. I mean, we cut agates and stuff, but I'm willing to use a blade for a week straight on an agate, take it off and throw it in the garbage and put a new one. I'm just willing to do that. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So, right. And I'm a cheapskate. So I have an MK <laughs> blade on my 14 inch that I have pinged that blade more times than Santa Claus has left presents, I'll tell you. And, uh, uh, and, and honestly, I put that MK blade up against the black label uh, Highland Park that I'm using on my new 16 inch. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry on what I do. That that Highland Park has just cut circles around that MK blade. It, it just does all day long. But it's I think it's the, the the difference in the way that they're segmented and the 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 oil and the way that it clean, cleans that blade as it goes around. So um, if you you know it, you, you need that that oil to be thin enough to allow it to get in there and actually. Um, uh, keep that clean and keep it lubricated and the MK blade doesn't do as good at that as what that Highland Park blade does on those two saws. Yeah. My experience. Guys, I'm sorry. I have to uh, step away from the camera for uh, just a minute. So I'll just have you guys keep everything going. I'm sure just don't talk about anything important until I get back. <laughs> <laughs> When she gets back, we're going to find out that she's been out with the skill saw cutting a couple of pieces to set up her slant lap. Yeah, right, right. Ryan, why don't you talk about the UV stuff that you were going to tell us about? There you go. Oh, okay. Not yeah, so I know it. that we had been talking about UV lights on the last show. So I brought mine with. It is a Convoy C8. We didn't really get to talk about um, actual models and things like that last time. But Now i got to look at what mine is. On Convoy C8, we've, we've, me and Andrew, yo, Andrew, how many of these do you think we went through before we actually settled down on this one? Probably 10 different ones. Probably 10 different ones before we actually found the one that we really liked. Right. What I love about this is we do fluorescent solar light hunting in the Upper Peninsula. And when you're on the lake, most of the models, you just have to shine out in the water. I could put waders on and walk out and shove my whole fist in the water with this in my hand, and it's not gonna do anything except for shine light out of it. Nice. Like, nice. It's, it's completely internally waterproof. It's two 18650 rechargeable batteries, which is, those are great, and they're they're cheap, but the ones you get with these are, are really nice, but um, these filters that they have on here are the brightest out of anything that you can get. What kind of these are you using, Kirsten? Did you have a convoy? Oh, mine is, let me grab it. It's right here. It is from. Convoy C8 right here. Where are you seeing that? No. Okay. So this was a gift to me from Eric, uh, Uperlite guy. Oh, no, um, Eric's great. Eric, yeah, yeah sure. he's, he's a really awesome guy. So um, I just know it's an N365. Um, and it has rechargeable batteries, which I love. So it lasts one battery charge can last like multiple trips. Let's see if I can get this to. Yeah, I see that. Settle. Yeah. So now tell us why, Ryan. Okay, so what's happening is you're taking a UV light spectrum with a filter on it. And whenever it hits the light, the light is refracting around inside on certain types of crystals. And it's outputting a different color spectrum image to 
the iris of your eye, and that's what you're visually seeing is that orange. Um, but we we have a lot of different things. Like you guys ever play with onyx, like this beautiful flowering mm -hmm. tube onyx. If you if you shine this stuff, it glows crazy glows. Right. But what's happening with the onyx is the light is getting trapped inside of the the banding layer, and it's bouncing around in there rapidly over and over and over and over again. So initially what's happening is that light is getting trapped inside of there for uh, an amount of time. So remember how they made like kids toy plastics back in like the 90s where you could turn the lights off after you had held it up to the light and it would hold a charge to it? Yeah. That's essentially what that was doing at a molecular level is those the light molecules are just bouncing around back and forth. Well, you can do that with stones too and a UV light. And if you've never done that in person before, it, it'll take your breath away the first time you do it. I'm telling you, we have had onyxes like root beer onyx where you could use a UV light in the dark on a big piece and write your name in it and it would stay there. Nice. In the dark. Well, it's, it's just cool. There's right. so a lot now of fun things you can do. Jaws just said he uses the same light that you do, uh, Ryan, and the, and the calcite glows pink. Um, what what does this do for you in the rock and mineral uh, and, and cabbing or collecting rocks? What does it actually do for you in that aspect? So say that if you were out collecting, can you see a charge? That is cool. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. 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 A lot of people oh, really like the, the yeah. fluorescent lights or rocks. So there's a well, there's a whole market for that too. Say if you're not a person that's if you live where we are, that's good at finding agates. Like um, if you're not good at actual physical going out and identifying stone to being able to rock hunt, this this can bring rock hunt enjoyment to people who aren't naturally good or trained at doing that kind of thing or not even or taught to do anything like that all they need is this and they need to go to a beach at night and walk and have fun that's or a dirt road you know right. train mm -hmm. tracks anywhere right right it's but that's what i love about it you don't have to have talent or knowledge to be able to do that you right. have to be able to shine a flashlight and walk right you're getting exercise, you're having fun, you're you're doing things with stone. I mean, that's that's half the fun of it is the the search for me whenever we go rock hunting. But I I like rock hunting for crystals and copper and things like that. Right. So right. I'll have to get me one of those. I've I've been meaning to get one and try it. Um, I've read about the Uper lights. Um, stuff like that that people really started using the UV lights with a long time ago. Uh, and I have some what is called Uper Quartz here. I have about eight pounds of that. I started slabbing the other day. And so I'm thinking, okay, if it's the same thing, I may get a light just to play with it and see what it does. And uh, <laughs> may, may, maybe I'll go out to the Willamette River and start cheating at nighttime. Then again, it's a good way to get arrested around here, walking out in the middle of Oregon with a, a flashlight of any kind. Right, right. Yeah. So Lots Ryan, of thunder. Oh, ma'am, ma'am. Um, tell little dab what the model of your light is again. Convoy C8. Yep. Yeah, yeah. that's the same my as husband, the light I have. Yeah. It's an N365. Got, my husband got me a lumen shooter. For I have some last year, and I don't know. He did all this. Uh, research and it is also an n365 well you ask him what those little lumens ever did to him kingsley that must north. be kingsley north sells these yeah so that is eric at uperlights.com yep eric's awesome yeah so when i first started going getting really into the fluorescent minerals i picked up this little light from home science tools it's about $40. It's super duper cheap, but it's portable. It's a flashlight. You can take it with you. It's got long wave on one end and then short wave on the other. Um, yes. It only works within six inches. So it's not something like the N6 threat. Uh, the N365 that you can take out and shine it on the ground standing up. This you actually have to be right over the stone, but it is a short wave light that gives you the full spectrum view. Um, 
So it's it's a very cool tool for someone that's just getting started. It's got a little switch there that goes from uh, the short wave to the long wave. Uh, but it is a battery killer. If you buy this, you need to get rechargeable batteries. Have you used that on your Tiffany stone before, madam? Oh, yes. It's it's gorgeous. And, you know, I wish my camera here could pick it up. I was trying with the other light. I just, uh, my setup here needs to get adjusted. But um, this other light, this is what's called a scorpion light. You mm. can see all the little LED lights in there. It is a black light. Because the carapace glows, right? Okay. It's a black light, but it is not on the proper wave to see correctly with uh like you would um you know this this style flashlight so it's going to show the colors are going to be different um and it may not even show the glow so uh these are ten dollars they're useful for calcites that's about it so completely different uh uh wavelength spectrum yes yeah and I, I see people asking these questions all the time about the different flashlights. And and honestly, if you just go on to mindat.com, you can um, look at the different fluorescent minerals and right. you can see the different Lost wavelengths Courtney. that you can see. At, yeah, I think Courtney had to go have... She had, have yeah, it was that time. Take off. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. We can finish up the show here wow. with, with just the three of us. That always works just fine. Well, one um, of the things that uh, that we talked about earlier about maybe talking about just a little bit is is the Mohs hardness scale on a lot yes. of the rocks that we collect. And yeah, how difficult it can be for some people to figure out how to perform that test. Um, for me, it's really simple. Um, I take a quartz crystal and, um, I don't know, I, I have a lot of different ways and I really wanted to get into this, but since we're at the hour mark, I don't think it's fair to our viewers to really get too into depth with this, but, um, sorry, I, I, um, well, let's yeah, save that I think one that's for the something we'll save that yeah. for the next show. Well, absolutely. absolutely. We almost have a whole show just on hardness and showing different types of hardness and hardness. Yes, absolutely. And things like that. So. And and why the hardness and and uh, yes. yeah. I agree. Yeah, I do. I have like this whole like spiel thing here, uh, but it's it's going to take me at least twenty minutes to go over. So I I really don't want to do that tonight, but. Um, I do want to do a giveaway. So for everybody here that was um, commenting and hanging out with us, I did have, oh, you know, one thing I didn't show was, if you can see right here, this is a, it's an agate slice, but it's, uh, what is it called when it has the rainbow in it? Iris I'm iris. having a brain fart. Yeah. Right. So this is an iris agate, and it does show full rainbow. Um, so I am going to have one of you pick a number one through. Let me double check and make sure I got everybody here. Really. I fast. think it's Ryan's turn this time. I chose the last one. So did you? Did you? Okay. Time? Yeah, I did the last one. Between what and what? Um, we <laughs> one through six. Roll the dice. One through six, uh, two. Okay. Number two was Bill. Bill, contact me on TikTok. You know how to do that. Send me your email and I'll send you your package. You just won this for hanging out with us tonight, talking with us. I did notice over here when I came over to the comments, we do have a few questions. Um, it looks like Lil Dab will do ya said can you use regular tile saw for cutting slabs i will say yes because that's all i've used ryan yeah good just job be, just be careful you, you definitely can use one oh. right right there there's the right blade and the right way to do it the right kind of a saw yeah i always okay. tell people that you can use a tile saw like to cut a piece in half it's just really hard to get a tile saw to do like accurate slabs you know what i mean but like you can 
but you can and it just takes practice yes. and um just make sure that you're being safe do not use your saw backwards right. i see a lot of people out there promoting this backwards saw use no do not you will you will end up getting hurt you'll ruin your blade you'll, you could break your blade uh, there's a lot of things that could go wrong so um, right. But yes, all I use is a tile saw. Um, I'm pretty excited. I am getting my first professional piece of equipment um, for Christmas this year. It's going to be a 10 inch tile trim or a 10 inch trim saw from Highland Park. So I'm, I'm super stoked. Oh, the that. HP. Nice. Hey, Did you get the <laughs> Agony I don't know. No. <laughs> yeah, no, that one, that one comes with a little bit different blade because um, that 10 inch trim saw that they they sell if it's the one that i'm thinking that you're going to get is more almost a commercial production saw yeah so i can cut uh you know slabs of tiffany um off my little nodules you know anything four inches or smaller and then i can also trim up my cab so that i have to show you guys this i've been talking about this for weeks so i have the belt buckle with me in question the one that I made, the very first intarsia I did seven years ago that my husband has worn every Oh, the terrible day. job one you were talking about? Oh, that doesn't look bad. I like it. No, there's nothing wrong with that at all. No. Okay, for a beginner, yes. Yes. So. I, I, I wouldn't say that for a beginner <laughs> anything. I mean, that's uh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys are so sweet. Amazing. I was expecting you to roast me. <laughs> it, it could be arranged, but not on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, what are you going to roast me about then, bud? Well, you know, there, there... where do you start? <laughs> okay, Honestly, so... guys, everybody, if you get a chance to go to um, Utah, Chirsten is the person to stop. You, you want to make sure and get to stop and, and visit with Chirsten. Uh, maybe do a little rock hunting like I did. You'll have a fabulous time. Well, Deb is 32 miles oh, yeah. from Gray. It sounds like we're pretty close to each other, actually. Thank you. That was also how we started, too. So I can say nothing. Right. I can say nothing. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a great way to start to get your foot in there to see if Wear it's something you want to keep doing. And then when you can afford it, you spend $1,000 on a new saw. Tile saws do kick up a lot of dust, so please wear a mask. Yep. Right. Please wear yep. a mask. Yep. Make sure you're using water, just nice eye protection. clean water. Eye protection yep. is good. Definitely eye protection. Yes. Don't wear gloves. Nope. And you can still touch the blade. It's fine. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to cut your finger off. Right. But you want to make sure you're using a continuous diamond blade. You do not use any right. diamond blades that have holes or cutouts in it. Um, no. And <laughs> Don't. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, not like a wood cutting saw. Um, it's more like a grinder. If you think about it, it's just right. using it's that diamond exactly. to grind. Yeah. And you don't want to push too hard. You want to let the water in the diamond do the work. So it's a it gentle like push. Forever. Don't get impatient. Just take your time. Right. Yeah. Hard stones and, and the, and cutting hi, Ahmed. And just taking your time. It might take you five minutes to get through. It'll be worth it. Just have patience with it and the right blade is important because a tile tile saw runs a lot higher rpm than what a uh, a slab it's, saw does so you need a different blade that is designed to run with water at that rpm okay so i do want to point out they sell glass cutting blades you do not want that not the right one um, no. it will not cut through jasper right. it will not cut through agate you'll just waste thirty dollars uh, go ahead and get a Get a get a continuous blade that um, I usually buy the Dewalt thirty or seven inch, and it's thirty dollars, and it's got um, so the way it's set up, it's got the diamond on the outside, and then it's got the diamond on the two sides. I have several videos that show how you can use the diamond on the outside to shape your cabochons. Right. It works really right. really well for that. Um, but, you know, it, it all is a learning thing. You have to just spend your time uh, practicing and making mistakes and learning. And what's nice about using diamond ingrained like that, you can use a dressing brick and use it over and over and over and over 
if it starts getting dull and not cutting good, you just take your dressing brick and run it through there once, and it's all sharp all over again. You just go right back to work with it. So. That's awesome. Yep. I'm spoiled. I've never owned a tile saw. Um, <laughs> my wife's you are not spoiled. happy, but, but you know, I own a real. I, I own. <laughs> You know, what can I say? Um, you, you get to the age where finally you're just able to do a few things that sometimes you couldn't when you were younger. So to those people, if you're starting out with a tile saw, use it. just be careful. But eventually, like Cheerston's doing and, and, and like Ryan has done, like I've done, you know, I started with an old cab mate where you had to swap the blades and the wheels and everything every time you wanted to do something different. And, and eventually you come to the place where you've saved or you've sold enough cabs, whatever you do that you get to buy the piece of equipment that you actually want. Um, it may not necessarily be better quality in some ways. I mean, it, you'll get more accuracy out of it. Um, you can shut the lid and walk away where you can't do that with a tile saw. And that, that's kind of nice. Um, but, you know, those are the things that come with, with uh, some time. And so, yeah, start out with what you have to. Just use it wisely. Just fall in love with lapidary guys. Right, absolutely. Yes, yes. And lapidary um, for, people. Yes. Oh, we are such a fun crowd, for sure. <laughs> hot crowd, hot crowd. Yeah, so as far as like um, investments, I think a tile saw or a regular trim saw or a cutting saw, um, that's, that's going to be very high on that list. <laughs> right. Yeah, the last one I got, I have uh, my my six inch saw. I have two of the six inch saws that we went through before. I, I started with that Rock Rascal. The the I'm not happy with the quality of the Rock Rascal like they used to be, and I replaced it uh, as soon as I could. Had I spent $150 more, I could have gotten the Highland Park six inch, and it is a world of difference, not only in in the quality but the way that it cuts. It has the blade like you're talking about, Cheerston Highland Park makes a blade for that one. And uh, I can I can turn that right up against the edge of that blade and I can trim almost right down to my line. Never hurt that blade, never hurt that saw because of the way it's designed. And, uh, and, and it's made to do that. That's what theirs are for. And so I really enjoy that. So I have three, four of the Highland Park saws now up to 16 inch. I have two of the six inches, the 10 and the 16. And if I can ever get rich like Ryan, I'm going to buy the uh, the 24 and the 36. Nice. Uh, we did have a question. Lil Dab wants to know, where's the best place for used equipment? So I would get on estate sales. I would look at rock clubs. I would look at Facebook right. Marketplace and Craigslist. Anywhere. Yeah, there's literally a, a, a used lapidary machinery groups on Facebook that you could yep. get on. Right. There's yeah, there is a lapidary marketplace that you can look, and that's it's uh, it's mostly used equipment. There's a lot of it out um, there. Tide Lamp, uh, he does have a lot of refurbished equipment, and uh, that might be someone to look into right. on Facebook. I'll put his name over here on the side. I think a lot of us know who it is. Cigar Box also has a great reputation for rebuilding equipment that they sell at a pretty decent price. I haven't dealt with them personally, but I see a lot of uh, people who have, and, and they recommend them still also. David, do you know Ty's uh, business name? I do not. I don't remember it either. I don't know. So either. you can look him up on Facebook. I did put his name into the uh, comments here. Uh, Jazz says, Idaho Rock Shop has a lot of used equipment. Usually any rock shop is going to have used equipment. Any rock club is going to have used equipment. Right. But I will tell you the absolute best way to get rocks and equipment is estate sales so you just want to keep an eye out for estate sales you can contact them you can call them you can say hey do you guys happen to have this yeah you can go down and look um i know in utah estate sales rock estate sales are a huge thing because it's such a big popular hobby here in utah uh whereas right. like probably not the same in colorado or wherever you guys are. In Oregon, I'm Oregon sure. is pretty big. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and if you're really going to fall in love with lapidary, when you go to those estate sales and places, if you find, say somebody has two trim saws and they want to make you a package deal, buy both trim saws. 
The nice thing about that is you might be cutting different materials. You can have one trim saw with a very thin blade, another trim saw with a little thicker blade. Um, depends on what you're doing. And then you're not having to go and swap blades before you can do your work. That's why I own multiple trim saws. Um, you might find a couple of cabbing machines that are used uh, that, you know, uh, same thing. Don't be afraid to buy a, a, a lot deal on that stuff. Maybe you can resell what you don't need, but think about your needs and what you might use them for even as two of the same thing. I wish I had another cabbing machine right now to do another four wheels on over the six that I've got. It would be great benefit because I would like to put on the uh, the eight through the 50 or 100,000 and not have to worry about swapping out wheels on stuff. Right now, and with the wheel machine, that's on my list for next year um, after I get this trim saw. I want to be able to cut cabs faster so I can make them faster on my lap. You know, um, it does. it's very time consuming when you have to constantly switch out um, your lap discs. So I tend to do batches of like 20 different cabs at a time. Um, and I sell all of my stuff through an art gallery in Wyoming. That's how I've been doing it for quite a while now. And I'm very lucky. Um, but I would like to start selling again on my Facebook group, Rock and Raccoon Rock and Mineral Market. Um, but I just don't. Have you guys noticed that there's like, it's fun to make, but then selling is very hard. Have you noticed that? Have you guys felt that? It is for me. It's 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 a tedious chore with all of the uh, all the photographing, um, trying to keep everything updated, constantly turning over to something new, um, and on top of that, um, you know, ninety nine percent of the cabs that I make, I look at them and say, no, I like that one too much to want to sell. Uh, that becomes yes. another issue. I guess it's easier for me because yes. I share the load. Andrew does all the techie stuff. Anything techie is Andrew. Any of the pictures posted online. He comes to me, he's like, hey, where's this from? What's it made of? I tell him all this stuff about the stone. He just goes and types it out and does it, you know? That's really how it is. That's 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 why we work so good together, though, is it really breaks it up for us. He loves being on the computer, doing all that stuff. I hate that. I love interacting with people and talking to people, teaching people about things. Well, what did that say? I missed it. I missed the comment. I do not people sell very well, so selling is difficult. Oh, Somebody else said they want that. to build a cabbing machine as well. Oh, yeah, I've seen a lot of DIY mm -hmm. stuff of people doing their own. Right. Um, I don't know. I'd love to sell. Yeah, so, like, I mean, I have a problem with pricing things. So, I mean, just take this for example. You read my this, mind. Is, 50 bucks. this is a very, very beautiful cab. And like, how would you know what to price that at? Like, for me, well, that's just so one, hard. I know what the material is worth, leave. but figuring your time and like all that information, I guess you price it for whatever it sells for, right? Yeah, and I guess it depends on the platform you're selling it on. Right. But I, with high-end stuff like Jimbone, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not afraid to put a big price out there on the right kind of stuff. I'm not. Like, like Tyree, ask him, go ahead, go ask him about pricing differences on bone. If it's worth it, it's worth it. You get what you pay for in the stone industry. I firmly Three years ago, I, I sold a gem bone, a dinosaur bone, uh, pop socket for a hundred bucks. And, and it was just gone just that quick. Um, nice. other, other things I have a heart. I'm like you, Chirsten, and, and you're, you exactly read my mind. I'm thinking we need to one time. Um, do a show and bring up the pricing structure and how to do this. Uh, the biggest part, most people will sell them by the gram or they'll start with a gram price and add in their labor, whatever. And I have a difficult time with that. And uh, so, you know, what should I be selling at? I think that would be a great topic to bring up for another show. Absolutely, Sounds 100%. Yeah, so like, we so did do our- I had a half little vertebrae of an ichthyosaurus from Volga River, Russia. Uh, the pyrotized is it pyrotized nice yeah and we we sold it for like eighteen hundred dollars the half polished vertebrae 
it just depends yeah. on what you have. You know what I mean? It just depends on what the material is, how rare it is. Right. If you could certify where it's from, all of that stuff matters. It really does. I think I think it's 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 good to bring up that it helps to have a group of three or four people that you absolutely trust that you can go to and you can say, Hey right. guys, right. I need help with this. Can you help me? You know, uh, building that circle is so key, I think to growing in the community well and I'm, I'm hoping so coming up on one of our our uh shows here in the next couple three weeks um i have uh, brad newport from we got rocks scheduled to come on here in the next two or three weeks they've just moved into a new home so they're unpacking and uh he does that he not only does live shows for rough um he sells anything that you can imagine that is made out of stone and every type of stone he actually has a uh, uh, a factory in uh, not India but uh, the Philippines Indonesia? as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, in in uh, in the Philippines, and so uh, he's really good at understanding how to break down the prices when he makes something, and and to to get that per gram or that per pound price out of it. He's really good. So that could be one of the things that maybe we could ask him as uh, when he's on. I think that is excellent. I think that is great. So with that being said, do you, Ryan and Dave, have a final message to our audience for the night? Because it is getting quite late. It, we've been a long time, haven't we? Uh, just just come and give us some love. You know, like our, like our, uh, our videos, repost them, tell people about us, tell people what we do. And uh, uh, hopefully we'll grow pretty soon. If you have questions, send us some questions. Yeah, um, if you got definitely send us questions, guys, because we're always talking about in our group about what we're going to talk about on the next show, what to bring up. We would love to have an entire show where it was just what you guys want us to talk about. Right. Absolutely. And I think that's a big part of why I like to bring everyone's comments as much as I can onto the screen, um, just so that we can all feel like we're building a tight little yeah. community here. So that's that's all what we're together. going for. Matter of fact, I would even like to see maybe occasionally we pick someone out of one of our audiences and have them come on and oh, uh, come talk fun. with us on the show. Wouldn't that, I, I think that would be really fun. Absolutely. Okay, guys, I'm going to take you off the screen real quick and... I'll see you in a second. Uh, just, I want to say thank you to everybody that came on today. Uh, everybody that participated in the comments. If you haven't already subscribed to us, please do that and hit that bell so that you know every Thursday, 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, we get together, we hang out, we talk, we invite guests on. We try to learn what we can of what's going on in the lapidary and rock hounding community. And I just want to thank everybody Bill, congratulations on winning tonight's uh, giveaway. Everybody that participates, um, you know, is entered into that chance. So with that being said, I hope you guys have an awesome weekend and keep on rocking.